Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my next guest hails from London, Ontario. And after a stellar minor hockey stint, he'd get scouted to the NCAA ranks and eventually play four solid years at Colby College in Waterville, Maine. He'd go on to pursue a career as a chiropractor, and his travels have taken him far and wide, including stops in St. John's, Newfoundland, and San Diego, California. This chiropractic coast-to-coast -coast hopper now resides in Idaho, where he's been a big part of the rich history of the Sun Valley Suns, an amateur senior hockey squad based in South Central Idaho. He is a pleasant player, a good guy, a dangling doctor, a likable Londoner, a curious chiropractor, a cool Canadian. He played through pain on his way to college in Maine. My audio is Dolby, and this guy played in Colby. He moved to the Rock and met Teddy Hitchcock. The kid can play and became a doctor one day. He once moved to Cali and now lives in Sun Valley. He lives by a creek, and I'll see him this week. Folks, Eminem goes by Marshall or sometimes Slim Shady. Please welcome to the show. It's Dr. Sean O'Grady. How the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing a lot better. I think I might have been trying. wrong in a couple of weeks. I know Holy you don't smokes. live right in Sun Valley, and I thought chiropractor. I don't know why that's in my head. Am I right? Okay. Okay. You got it. Now, first of all, how, how did you get into that? So you, for those that don't know, John played with a good buddy of mine, David Manning, okay? And back in the 2000s, I believe, maybe the late 2000s, I got to know John through working at the bar and playing hockey and David Manning, and it's a small closely knit hockey community here. Now I haven't seen Sean since we've, we've spoken on the phone. I know that you've been to San Diego. I know you became a doctor, but I didn't realize. So what led you into doing chiropractic stuff? First of all. Yeah. Well, hockey, like everything else, right? So what'd you do at Colby? Um, I, I was a science, okay. science guy. I was bio. Um, so I had always wanted to get into healthcare to be honest, but I wanted to play hockey as long as I could just like everybody else. So, uh, I actually followed Dave uh, across the pond for for a cup of coffee um, over in Serbia and was playing over there, and I got hurt hurt badly. So, um, yeah, Transylvania, Halloween, um, hit from behind kind of thing. And uh, that was sort of the end of things for me. And so I came back, and at that time, you couldn't have paid me money to go see a chiropractor for anything. But my mom actually convinced me to go see her chiropractor and this guy – uh, fixed me up and I thought, wow, this is, there's something to this. And if I'm going to get into healthcare, I should, I should go with something that I know is going to work. And so I applied to graduate school, got in, immediately moved to St. John's. As soon as I got in, wanted to go play some hockey again. And that's when I got up and, uh, uh, joined Dave and was playing the Torbay there. So yeah. it was sort of a roundabout way of getting there, but, um, it worked out, uh, one way or the other. And I can, Feel my hands again, and Jesus, I feel your hands a lot again. More so it must have been quite an injury. Uh, um, so, what one. brought you to so San Diego? I guess the work brought you there, and then you you figured Sun Valley from there, or or whatever Idaho. Well, my last my last company was in San Diego, but my grad school was in San Francisco. So I was in San Francisco for ten years or so. Uh, that's what actually got me to California. Um, was was after leaving St. John's and being in the. The coldest place on John's earth. John's to um, San Francisco. It was a big, I literally showed up with two bags, uh, the same two bags that I had on uh, at Dave's house there on Maxie Street, not far from the pub, and uh, showed up, had no idea what to expect, and um, got, off the, got off the plane, got on a train, and next thing you know, I was Unbelievable. How long were you here for in St. John's? Uh, it was uh, just was one so season. Was that yeah, a full calendar year? year? It was, no, it was about, okay. it was about eight I months. Um, 2000, 2000, 2005. In fact, actually, my very first night in St. John's was in your basement. Uh, it was New Year's Eve. The, the and, uh, famous uh, seniors' you know, basement for those that are following along. Uh, yeah. I do remember that. Jesus Christ, yeah. it doesn't seem like that long ago. <laughs> No, well, I mean, we've we've heard some of the same stories. Oh a few yeah, of course, since, right? Of uh, course, yeah. It's the exact same too. It's the exact same. And if I'm not there on a Friday, usually like one of the boys incredible. or someone will stop by and say hi. 
Now, I'm going to get back into this, but what am I exactly, what what does this weekend involve? So, for though, I mean, I do have actually a lot of listeners from Boise because I obviously used to play for the Steelheads. And I, I, I don't know how many, but I just know from my messages and the interest and, you know, how many times I get called to do an interview from there or whatever that a lot of people follow along with Shorzy and follow along with my podcast. So, um, I, I guess... So the, a, a lot of them asked me when I dropped that I was going to Idaho. They said, well, what are you going to be doing in, in Idaho? And I know I'm playing a couple of hockey games, but can you put in a package, a verbal package, exactly what I'll be doing and uh, how much fun it's going to be? Yeah, it's it's always tough to put this kind of stuff into words because I had no idea what I was walking into when I moved out here. Um, so the Suns, Suns organization started 50 years ago, senior A hockey uh, in the U.S., I think that the second oldest senior A team in the U.S. next to New wow. York St. Nick's. And um, we're in the middle of nowhere. And so we have to bring teams in from all over the place who want to come and play here. And it's a great place to be, as, as you know, as, you, as you've been here a few times. It's a lot of fun uh, to hang out in this area. It's a ski town, but there's a lot to do outside. And so we get teams from all over the country. Um, I think back in the day, we used to get a few of the teams from Senior A out in Alberta uh, as well. And they come down and they ski and they play hockey and have a good time with the boys and uh, back they go. So this uh, this all came about three years ago. Uh, when COVID hit, we, we ended up having to shut down the league. Now the league's coming back. When you next say year, league, it's a meantime, it's a Central Idaho league, or or who you play against? It's a it's a four team league. There are a couple of leagues now, uh, but ours was a four team league called okay. Black Diamond Hockey League, and and it's literally like you know the towns are the towns make a diamond, um, and it's Bozeman, Jackson, Park City, and Sun Valley. You know, and so we would play home and home and we'd probably end up with a 25, 26 game schedule for the year. Um, you'd have playoffs, you'd play for uh, the Joe Casey cup. And uh, it was a, it was a blast that fell apart during COVID because as everything did. And so on the backside of that, it was tough to spin the league back up and we wanted something to play for at the end of the year. And of course, as hockey's a small world word got around that we were looking for a team and a team out of Boston reached out and said, we're going to come up, you know, and beat the pants off you guys. And we said, that's okay, come on up, let's do this. And they said, you guys are the Sun Valley Suns. We're going to be the Moon Mountain Moons. And we said, okay, come on, this is this is a joke. They said, no, there's a, there's a town in Massachusetts called Moon Mountain. We're going to get our team together and we're coming out. And sure enough, they did. And they were awesome. They were all like BU kids and uh, ex-pros from, that were living in Boston. And uh, they wanted to play for a trophy. They want to play for the Eclipse Bowl. Anyway, this thing started out as just kind of a, let's get one more weekend in. But we sold the place out. We've sold it out every year um, for, for this weekend. It's great hockey. Wow. Sell out being how many? We wanted, it's a thousand. I mean, it's fire code, right? Senior A fire code. So uh, 999. Okay, so it fits. I, I don't know. I, I saw it. The, uh, when you asked me, I saw some highlights online. Thousand. I know there's enough to fit a decent little crowd in there. How many people are in the, uh, the, the rink is in Ketchum or Sun Valley? There is a rink in Ketchum that we used to play in. We got a brand new rink in Haley uh, nine years ago. And so we play all our games in Haley now, which is, you know, it's, it's nice. It's a slightly bigger town and has a lot more of the kids. It's where a lot of the youth hockey happens as well. So we play out okay. here um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's full. It's like playing in any, you know, like playing in any senior A barn in, in Ontario or in, um, in Newfoundland. So I noticed, and I, I'm looking at the rosters. I, I I remember Marty Flickle from Junior, and uh, yeah. and Daryl Hay in particular. There's guys I recognized, but those guys. So they're going to be playing with me on the Moons, correct? We're coming in. So yeah. what? Who's so your you team made up of? I know that I I saw our squad. I saw like you know, there's enough guys that played college. Marty, myself, Daryl, I, I think a couple other ex steelheads. So I have an idea about our team. I have no idea about your team. Who, what, what's your team made up of? We usually like to keep it that way. Uh, so we are made up of 
kind of a similar style okay. roster, a lot of ex college, ex pro. Um, and then we also were now getting kids who played the local minor hockey system are, are who, who did well are retiring, moving back here and they're playing for us as well. So we've had this sort of transition to getting a lot more of the local guys uh, into the lineup, but you're going to see a lot of college kids. You're going to see um, uh, a couple of guys with some, some resumes, but uh, do you practice? Be very similar. Like during the season, are you, are I you mean, going to practice? Much as, yeah. I, I well, got three I'm kids saying that I, I, I don't normally on a Wednesday story. night. If you, I'm, if you were playing senior hockey or something, of course there would be a level of continuity to it and consistency. But given given this, but yeah. so you guys do skate as a group, and then this this big weekend would be the culmination yep. of your quote unquote hockey season sort of thing, right? Yeah, this is the last weekend. So we skate all year long. We start in October, and then we finish in March, um, which makes for a long season for an older guy like me. But uh, we're on the ice three times a week, four times a week, all season. And long. you. Now, again, I fucking loved it. When I played in Boise, people don't really, like, when I say Sun Valley in, in an area, and we're, we're talking Ketchum, Haley, it, 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 that's all in the same sort of South Central, I don't know, if, if, I, if I remember yeah. correctly. Um, and But it's a ways away. Like, we're talking a couple hours. It's not like we're going to go into Boise for a coffee, right? Am I wrong? It's it's a way. Yeah. No, you got it right. We're, we're in the middle um, of nowhere. So... And I again, I love it. It's a resort town. Like I said, I, I really got a kick last time out of, I, I mean, I won't say I'm a big Ernest Hemingway fan. I'm a big fan of, I mean, I got an English uh, BA, right? Folklore English double major BA. So I not only do I know who he is, I read two of his books that I loved, but he's got a huge, like, and, and, and a short story collection. And anyway, and, and he's Ernest Hemingway. He's one of the most famous American writers ever. Anyway, there's there's a couple of little places, but I remember driving up there to go to the little water hall that he used to go to. I mean, I, I know there was more than one, but you know the one I'm talking about. And um, you know, I used to have some beers, and I, I really enjoyed it. We went up there more than once. weren't supposed to ski during the season, but we did. And, I mean, it's a bit of fun, right? But what I'm saying is that San Diego, San Francisco, we're, we're talking different weather. So you love Sun Valley area so much. Um, Idaho, that you're willing to go through the winters as opposed to, say, San Diego, which is pretty much the same climate all year long and uh, very desirable. I'm not saying Sun Valley isn't, but I'm saying to you, you know, because I, I fucking hate the cold. And even though I love Sun Valley, if I had my decision, I'd probably pick San Diego. Yeah, well, you wouldn't be alone. Our Our decision, so we were living in San Francisco and we came out here for a wedding. I, I couldn't have picked this place out on a it map. It is beautiful, at time, if you yeah. asked me to. Oh, you couldn't have. Yeah, I mean, most people can't. Incredible. The only reason, honestly, that I had heard of it is because Bruce Willis and Demi Moore had a place there. I remember that. And when I played there, it was like big news. And Idaho Steelheads, what I loved about there, sorry to cut you off, Sean, um, that we had, like, there were, there was, there's no ticket close. There's no pro hockey anything, pro anything close. So, uh, we we had all kinds of fans from there, and I remember uh, there was Paul Revere. It was a lead singer of a band called Paul Revere and the Raiders back in the day. Uh, Bill Buckner, you know Bill Buckner, the baseball player that was a un- fucking believable player, yeah. but is remembered for the one error. He, he he lived. And so yeah. these people would come in and go to the games, and I used to ask them, "I'm like, where are you guys coming from? Like, you know, like you want to go out for to the restaurant? No, we got to get back. We got to get back to Sun Valley." And I was going, "Okay, I got to check this place out." Now I went there. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's it's like your it's like a permanent vacation. When I say Sun Valley, I mean the whole area. That's just yeah. where I used to go for more than one reason. Okay. So anyway, I'm guessing that some play I mean, I loved Idaho in general. Fucking Boise's awesome. It remind, reminded me a lot of Newfoundland, to be honest. Well, St. John's anyway. The city of Boise reminded me a lot of the city of St. John's from size, attitude. You know, a lot of people drive out of town and go hunting and fishing yeah. and you know, it's a very Canadian slash Newfoundland kind of way of life. But do a lot of ex players stick around there? Yeah. So Boise, as you kind of as you called out, it's got this great community as well. So so guys like Flickle, for example, yeah. 
uh, they've been in Boise for 20 years. Same with Hazy and, and Jade, all, all these guys that played there, um, have stayed and, and they end up up here. And this is, as you said, a special spot. This is the kind of place, um, I didn't even know these kinds of places existed growing up in, you know, cornfields. You grew up in cornfields? Um, I thought it says London, Ontario, or is that where you were born? I was born in Chatham. Uh, just down the road and then Ridgetown, which is just a little further down the road. Um, and then on the edges of London was all cornfield. Yeah. So now uh-huh. it's not, now it's a big city, but, um, back then. So, so coming out here was, was incredible. It was like, you know, you could see the stars. That was the first thing I noticed was, holy smokes, you can see the stars. And, uh, the next day it was like, what's that massive animal that I've never seen before. And it was, uh, you know, this bull elk, um, and then you see, I mean, you're just seeing all these things that you never, you read about in books, you never see them in real life. Well, they're all here. So we got to, we got this taste of nature yeah. that I thought, well, holy smokes, this is, if we get a shot at it, this would be a great, a great place to be. We were looking at Canmore. We were looking at a place north of Montreal. My wife um, kind of had the same reaction you did, which was like, I am not doing another East Coast winter. Like, right. absolutely not. After Colby and everything else. So this is a, this is a little different. This is like, you know, it's nice. You're out skiing. Um, it's, it's cold, but it's dry. And then uh, add, add on top of that, the fact that it became a hockey town. I hated hockey for 10 years. I left St. John's and, and moved out to California. And I was like, I don't even want to see my gear. Um, we moved out here and, and, you know, I got involved with the Suns through Cubby, uh, John, John Burke, who was running the team then. And fell in love. It fell in love with the game again, and got to meet all these guys, and I'm having a laugh, you know, three, four times a week, back on the ice. And I think that really kind of changed my outlook on a lot of things. But to do that in this place, where it's just one of the nicest places I've ever been in the world, has been a blast. Do you um, keep in touch with the Manning? So so before we go there, just to explain to everybody, I guess so. Those that listen, at the end of every podcast, I say, like, if you're going to go to George Street, make sure you stop in to the Bull and Barrel, Trinity Pub, uh, TJ's, yeah. Green Sleeves. I list off these bars, but people, like, they don't sponsor me or anything. I, I say it because I've had so many free beers at those places, and, and a lot through Little Back Guys, Jeremy Hart by <laughs> extension. Most of the guys are not, but, but Hart and um, the Mannings, and, you know, because you hang around. We go down at, right now, we go down after. Hockey on Friday or Saturday, it's usually one or the other. And, uh, you know, have a, have something to eat, have a few beers. And over the years, so, so many times I've been in there and had so many free drinks. And there's such a legendary family around here. Dave, Bernie, and Mike. And they're all different people. Like, because Bernie, I think Bernie was a goalie. Yeah. I know he might have played out at some point. But when we, when we would play, he would be a goalie. But he's a really world-class, or at least from what I've seen, soccer player. He's one of the best soccer players to come from Newfoundland and he played so long. He played into his forties and he's got this whole, like he still coaches and runs clinics and he's got this whole legendary kind of soccer aura about him. And then you got Mike, um, who's the middle kid. And, and Mike was always like a local great hockey player, always on the scene. As you know, like Mike is part of the fabric of downtown and that era is hockey, right? He was one of the boys like, and I really got to know him well. I probably hung out with Mike the most. And then you got David, who was a little pepper pot of a hockey player, completely on, not, I mean, similar to his brothers, but on the ice, not so much. I mean, one's a goalie, one's a big D, burly D. And then you got David, who's popping around. Like, he's like a little, um, like, a, like a rabbit. Like, he bounces around the ice. He's so, he's such a great player and such a a different kind of positive always outlook on life, at least from what I saw. And now he's been coaching at St. Andrews for a long time. He's developing all these hockey players in Ontario. A lot of now have gone on to play pro. He's been doing it so long. So I knew them from, from from, obviously my whole life. And I love Trinity pub. It's also come. I don't, I'm not just saying it because they've done me favors. It's a really cool place. It's really expanded too. If you ever get back, you're going to love it. It's way bigger. They got a place for a bigger place now for live music. There's all kinds of food. So it's awesome. But when you were here, I'm guessing, because you were here for that eight months, you were playing hockey in Torbay. Dave was still here at the time. What would have been, I don't know, you worked at the bar. And at the same time, so 
how would you sum it? Like, did you have a good time in Newfoundland? And did you hang up out with the Mannings as much as I thought you did? Yeah, yeah, I had a, I had a blast. Uh, I I can't wait to go back. Actually, my wife and I talk about it all the time. So, Dave, I knew Dave in college. Roommate, my roommate okay, in college. see, I didn't I didn't and, realize that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was my roommate, and uh, when and when I got kind of finished up overseas, he said, "Why don't you?" come on out here and keep playing. And so I got out there and as I said, it was new year's Eve. We went, I think straight to your house and he told me I was going to be working at Trinity pub. And I said, Dave, I don't, I don't know what I I'm doing back there. back there. <laughs> he said, yeah, he said, he said, don't worry about it. The guys will just tell you what to do. You just do what they do. And I walked into this place and I thought, Holy smokes. It, 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 it's, it's, you know, it's backed up against a cod shop, which is yeah. couldn't be more perfect. So you got the fish. The very you know, end of George you know, Street. Yeah. You got the bar down low. Yep. Uh, and um, yeah, right at the end of George Street, there was like, you know, an epic kind of snowball flight fight going on that, the, as I'm trying to get into the, it was just a scene. There's a line out the door. There's music cranking inside. I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but let's give it a go. And uh, I think this is the next day. And, and you and your dad come in and Dave's off doing something. And you guys asked for a Guinness. And I thought, oh, no, I knew they were going to ask for this. So I went and poured a Guinness, yeah. you know, straight down. And I could see you looking at it like, what is this guy doing? You know, and your, your dad was your dad was kind of looking at you. He yeah. wouldn't even look at me. He was just like so embarrassed for me. And I give, the, give you back the, the Guinness. Uh, and he kind of looked at me like, no. Do it again. Do it like that. Anyway, so you guys all brought me along, but uh, you know, and 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 Mike, Michael Manning, who yeah, everyone Mick, calls yeah, Mick, yeah. as you know, um, Mick was great with me. So was Bernie. Bernie was like, "You want some extra money? You come paint my house." He was living out uh, by yeah. Kitty Vitty at that time, and um, they they just they just took me under their wing. Um, all of the Mannings did. They, they hosted my dad. My dad worked for Canada Post, and when he would travel around, anytime you go to Newfoundland, the Mannings would host him, uh, put him up uh, for, for his time there, which was so nice. So they really made it a great experience for me and, and took it easy on me. Um, same with the guys on Torbay. It was, it, was a, it was a blast. I had so much fun. That is, is awesome. I didn't realize as much. And the eight months you were here, too. I, like, if you guys come back, especially with your family, Try to do it during the summer. I, I, off, I mean, like anywhere in Canada, but people don't like. We well, it's like, and and when you say cold, for those that haven't been, it's cold in that the wind is coming off. Like, it's colder in like Western Canada. I mean, I've never been so cold as I've been in, in well, even two weeks ago. I'm in Fort St. John. It's like minus thirty. But so when people look at the the weather, it's like, oh, you know, you got. Terry, I lost audio on you there. Now it rained ever since. So it's almost back to where it was. I mean, it's as you know, right? So the weather can be crazy, and it's almost bone-numbing cold, even though it's technically colder you know, in lots of other parts of Canada. But this kind of winter, and again, I attribute it. I, I can't believe it. Can you imagine this just... Being a human, like hundreds of years ago, if you're in St. John's, you go up, just get in a boat and float for, I don't know, a couple of weeks, and you're in like, well, less than that. You're in North Carolina at least. You, go, I don't know, Florida, like before electricity, I mean, right? So the people here, like George Street's popular, yeah. I, I believe over the people are like, oh, they drink, they have a good time. I, I, I think you would have had to have some social not consciousness, but you know, you, you would have had to be extra social if you wanted to survive and be happy amongst that kind of weather back with, before electricity. So it's something that they yeah. do here, but yeah, like it's almost the worse the weather gets, the more people are downtown on George street boozing. That must've been different to go to San Francisco from here. And by the time you got to San yeah. Fran, I'm guessing, were you together with your wife then? No, I wasn't. Um, so I got out of I got out of St. John's, moved to San Francisco. My wife Amanda went to Colby as That's well. That's where you met her. Uh, okay. Was in my class. So she lived down the hall, and of course, she was uh, smart enough to 
stay far away at that point um, from, from the hockey guys at the other end of the hall. And, but we were all friends and she had, she had moved here. She's actually the one who knew about this place. Where she, she moved here right out of college. She's from, she's from New York. She's, from, she's one of those kids that is from all over. She was born in Amsterdam and then grew up in Hong Kong yeah. and moved back to New wow. York. One of those where you're, I, I, I joke with her, with her, with my father-in-law that I, that I think he's an international spy um, just cause he's got all the, you know, all the spots. So anyway, she was at Colby um, that moved right here. So as a lot of kids do from, from that area, um, they want to, they want to ski. They want to, they want to take a little bit of time after, after school. And, and they just kind of pack up a car and drive here or a place like it. Uh, so she came out here for a couple of years and uh, the classic story, you kind of say you're going to come for three months and you stay for, stay for many years. And she was one of those people. Then she moved to San Francisco and we ran into each other there. Um, and so I was, you know, I was in graduate school. She was working at a place there before she went to grad school. So that's what? how we actually you, ended you up mean she knowing was about this Colby place. with you yeah. and you just happened to find both of yourselves in San Francisco. Fuck, that's crazy because the, the United States it's funny. is so big. It's so yeah, weird. that's weird. I mean, 50 states, first of all, and yeah. then majors. California's got more people than Canada, and you guys just happen, and that's just one state, and then you guys just happen yep. to be in San Francisco uh, 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 together. That is absolutely yeah. wild. Now, what did you think in San Francisco? I've been there a few times, and I loved it, but I can see maybe how if you were local – well, I can't, but I, I, I haven't been there, but it, things change when you're local. Is it as cool as I thought it was? Yeah, it was. Uh, so I was there. I got there in 2000. Now it would be different because I know there's a lot and, of homeless. And, and, and like, I'm not saying that I don't support the homeless. Yeah, I, 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 I hope each and every one of them finds a good. I, I just mean there, there, there's a lot of overpopulation with, with uh, oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on in a lot of cities, but I think now it would just be a different yeah. perspective than it would have been in, in 06. But anyway, sort of cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah. No, uh, I think I, I actually, I'm glad to hear you say that you loved it. I always thought uh, you, you would fit right in there with it's the unreal. music scene and kind of everything going on. And that's what I loved about it. We, I would spend my nights going to every show I could, you know, you can every. go find a show in, every every spot it's not like george street where you got michael bercy and and john lacy you know strumming away um but you can find a different band in every kind of in every little spot and that's what i would do i would come home from school i'd get my get my work done and i would i'd go to catch a show and so i i loved it there when amanda and i got together um we kind of we moved around a lot san francisco is an expensive place so we, we ended up having to move quite a bit. Uh, I moved, I think, like nine times in seven years or something like this. But uh, what was great about it was you got to meet a lot of people. And, and funny thing with San Francisco is no one's actually from there. Everyone's from somewhere that. else. So I got in with, uh, with some of the, you know, as you do, hockey helps with a lot of things. So I got in with some of the, some of the hockey guys there where we kind of knew one another through various, uh, you know, small circles. And it was fantastic. We, we loved it there. The people were great. Um, obviously it's California. You're doing, you know, you're, you're doing things you wouldn't be doing in, 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 uh, Ontario. And, you know, I learned how to surf a little bit. I learned, I learned how to go out and like go for a high, things that I just would not have done because I was playing hockey my whole life. Um, uh, but mostly it was getting, getting to go see a lot of shows and, and, and getting to enjoy the music was my favorite part of living in San Francisco. Was there a pro hockey team there? There's it's come and gone. When I, played there was a team there the san francisco spiders and uh, they only lasted for one year but i don't know if yeah. they, when you were there did they have a team they they brought a team back it was the uh yeah. the bulls i think it was like a, it was like a coast team um they played in the cow palace uh was where the sharks which, played at first you know I, i'm sure you probably that was it's a legit yeah. rodeo ground like there's um so, th- so they were they were there for a minute. Um, I, I think they had a rough go because it's hard to draw people out of the city, the rinks out of the city. So, other than that, there was a, there's a league downtown, right downtown. Uh, wasn't it's a skate wasn't too bad? It was, yeah, it's a skate. It was a California, keep yeah. up. Get a sweat. We know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. 
This week, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gambling resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. Okay, so this particular weekend, now I get in tomorrow, being being Thursday. Um, we're playing on Friday and Saturday. And then I'm glad I got that extra day Sunday. Normally I would fly home on that day, but... Just being that this is a great, a great spot. I, I, the one thing that I missed about playing, the, the biggest thing when I retired, I realized it was traveling. I mean, there's parts of the game, of course. It's, it's nice to skate, skate around in the NHL. It was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm not saying, but, but those are memories that I'm glad I have. But as a consistent way of life, it was all free travel. So I'm glad that I get to come back and do that. Now, what does it consist of? We're going to go skiing this weekend, right? Not that I'm a big skier, You're but skiing. when it's a nice yeah. lodge and it's a place to go, so we are, right? Yep. So you're going to play, uh, play play two games, uh, and then all our guys will probably be skiing all day. I won't be. Uh, you won't be. Um, but a lot of the guys will ski all day long. They'll go out in the backcountry and hike a mountain and ski a couple times, and they'll go to the rink. Wait, wait, we'll wait, wait, Friday, wait, wait, wait. Saturday, hike and then a on mountain? Sunday. They're gonna they're gonna ski yeah. and and hike and then play at night. They're gonna they're gonna hike up. They're gonna ski down. They'll probably do that a couple times. Then they're gonna get their stuff and go to the rink and play two games. Oh. And then on Sunday, they're gonna take you up Dude. to the mountain. Um, and you know, make sure you get. Oh yeah, I want to have a nice big once. breakfast. Maybe even at that Hemingway Saloon, whatever it's called. And yeah. I'm gonna have some. Uh, maybe a couple of Caesars and then we're going to go from there. I'm really looking forward to Sunday, but I'm really looking forward to the whole thing. What does Thursday have in store? Thursday is, uh, so, so I'll pick you up. So we're going to go to the airport. I'm going to pick you up and take you up to, uh, up to catch them up to where the resort is. And we'll get you kind of the lay of the land. Um, maybe we'll go get you all your skis and all that kind of stuff. Get your stuff dropped off to the rink. And then, uh, we're out to supper. So, uh, we're going to go probably hit up um, maybe the Sawtooth Club where, where uh, Hemingway spent a lot of times. I know that's a near and dear to your heart. And then it's going to be uh, uh, this is a high pressure meal because the brass are all coming into town. So they're going to uh, um, put you through oh, the good, ringer. Good, I think good, that's supper. Good. So. Well, the, the Hemingway thing, <laughs> I, I, um, there's, I, I don't know how to put it into words, but there's, it, it, it's like an, uh, an intellectual rom- romantic feeling, if that's there, just having read, and you know when you're, you're when you're reading classic American fiction, um, th- yeah. There, yeah, there's some level of intrigue, like romance to it, not in a sexual way, but it's it's um to me it's a really endearing feeling, you know, like not that I'm. I, I'm a writer in a sense. I got a couple of books out about my life. I'm not comparing. I'm just saying when you go through school and take that degree and you see these big names and, you know, he liked to booze, right? As a lot of writers do. So I, I like to go in there and just, you know, for a second, put yourself in that position. When I went to uh, Rapid City last year, I went and sat down and had a couple of beers in the seat that um, Wild Bill was was shot. He was shot through the back, holding aces and eight. Oh, yeah. I sat in that seat. The yeah. same sort of feeling. Historic, you know. It's historic. It's nostalgic, and there's a connection with someone that might seem unconnectable, you know. Um, but anyway, I'm I'm really, yeah. really, really looking forward to that. So, do what? What do I need to bring? Can you guys? You guys are going to set me up because I don't have any. I, I mean, I like skiing when I can do it. I can't do it much. You yeah. guys got all that shit. You're. 
Yeah, we got everything. So the funny thing here is, is everybody's kind of a guide of some sort or works yeah. in a gear shop. And, um, so you're, you'll be all set up that way. Uh, you'll have, you'll have a good set of tour guides and all the guys. The, the other thing is, you know, it's, it's senior in hockey in Idaho, but all the guys read your stuff. They all know, you know, they all watch the shows, they all read the books. Um, and so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, it's funny because I don't, I think probably three quarters of the guys have no idea that I know who you are kind of thing. So I'm just kind of a fly on the wall and, and, um, they know that you're coming now. And, uh, so I think you're, you're going to probably have to buckle up. These guys are going to take you for a ride. I like to hear that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll have all the gear for you. Um, and we got, uh, we, our, our, our equipment managers, um, will take care of all your stuff too. So, uh, we got a couple guys, uh, one's a golf pro here, uh, Sean Eicher who takes care of all of our, all of our gear. And then the other guy is, uh, Beats Johnson who, who used to be with the Bruins and the Rangers. Um, and so they'll set you up too. They'll take care of all your stuff for you. Um, and you just kind of show up and play and have a good time and, have a couple laughs, maybe lose, lose a couple of hockey games to the Suns. And <laughs> okay, listen, go. man, I'm really looking forward to this now. Um, I've got maybe 10 minutes left, give or take. Uh, I got a, 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 a segment at the end of most podcasts called Rapid Fire Randoms. Are you game for Rapid Fire Randoms? I'm game. I brought some of my own. Today. Oh, yeah. You always mm-hmm. have... Uh, if I remember correctly, there was many, many, an intriguing bar conversation. You've got a curious mind. I suppose when you go through school and the older you get, you have more to talk about, right? You know, you, yeah. you well, I often I say it, yeah. now, like people are like, you know, what, what's different when you're 20 and where you are now? I'm like, well, I guess it's life experience. You have more to draw from whatever you're doing. Hmm. Yep. Well, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not saying I can keep up with oh, you. You but can keep up with me in many ways. I got a few. I got, I got a few of my own. Okay, yeah. here we go, Doctor Sean O'Grady, rapid fire random death row meal. You've been put away. Um, Idaho, I'm not sure of the death penalty. Maybe they do. I know Washington State does. Similar politics and uh, similar history. So whatever you've done, you've you've come home, and one of the moon mountain city moons has um has trashed your house it's a bad prank you're hung over you're pissed off you throw a knife in his neck now you're on death row you're going to be put to death dr sean o'grady what are you going to have for your last meal street tacos wow first time i've ever there's of these questions there's two or three i ask everybody and i've never heard anybody say street tacos congrats to you for that uh superpower you had to pick one Well, I wish I could skate uh, as fast as I could when I was younger. That's for sure. Let's see. For real superpower? Well, I mean, that's a nice um, superpower. It's all hypothetical. I'll tell you a real superpower. I wish I could get by without having to sleep. Wow. That's another unique answer. Most people say flying or invisibility, which is, again, a fucking great answer. but Or it's, or it's a decent answer, just a little bit predictable. Terry, you know I got... I got three girls. I play this game every night at supper. Like we can, I, we can <laughs> do this all day. You got three girls. I forgot that again. My memory of you is not having three girls, nor nor me having any kids. Um, <laughs> who's gonna win the cup? I, you know, I can't. Uh, here's how I'm gonna answer that. One year, the wings are gonna win again, and that's all I care about. Wings need to get back. Um, I'll tell you who's not going to win the cup is the Leafs, which is getting ridiculous. I grew up hating the Leafs, and it's not even – all. everybody loves the Leafs, right? You know, London, Ontario, everybody loves the Leafs. Even my dad now loves the Leafs, and it's not even fun to hate the Leafs anymore. So but you do hate them. Um, wow. Can't wow. The can't stand – hey, what, what is it? Just a rebellious attitude that you still have? You started when you were 15 or 16 and you're carrying it over? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we we lived in Windsor. Um, uh, Windsor, there's your Detroit. The, the, okay, there's the your Detroit Windsor. affinity. Yeah. Um, so so when I was living in Ridgetown, though, um, I was a huge Wings fan, and I got to go and meet 
the wings. I was eight years old. I got to go meet oh, the that, wings. That was no fun. And the Leafs were in town. Eight years old meeting the wings must oh, have been like amazing. going to Disney. Joe Lewis. I walked into Joe Demers, uh, uh, Jacques Demers' office, and um, you know I'm looking at the guy that I see coaching the team on TV. He's got nothing in his office. He has a briefcase on his on his desk. That's it. And he opened the briefcase, and there's like a folded up hockey. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Just a stick that's folded up in the briefcase, and that's it. The office was bare. And he's like, "Hey," yeah. but I got to meet him. Um, I got to meet Iserman, which was which was. You know, that guy's my hero, uh, you know, as a better, kid yeah. and all these guys. So I grew up a Wings fan. I mean, I can't, I often say, is there a better captain? I don't really know. I wasn't in the dressing room, but everything leads me to believe that he was an unbelievable captain from the winning, the attitude, the quotes. And, yeah. and I got some people on the inside. We got Danny Cleary, right? Um, yeah, okay. That's right. That's right. And Jason Williams, another good another London, boy. London boy right there. I forgot he was from London. A lot of big goals in that guy's career. Um, so you're, um, you got to pick one of these movies. Guess you're on a train on a warm summer's evening and you're on a train bound for nowhere. You met up with a gambler. He was much too tired to sleep and you got one movie to watch after he kicks the can at the end of the song. <laughs> you got about three hours left and you got to pick one of these movies, Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption, Oppenheimer, or No Country for Old Men. Oof. It's either Pulp Fiction or No Country. If it's No Country, that's going to be a weird train ride. Um, but it might send a message. <laughs> I think it's got to be Pulp Fiction. Yeah, man. I, those are the first four that popped into my head um, as spanning great movies for different eras. I thought you... I thought you were going to, I thought you were, as soon as you said gambler train, I thought you were going to go with like midnight. Yeah, Run or I love like that. I, th- there are movies that I could, uh, what's the other one? Is it Maverick? I like that one, the riverboat gambling. Uh, but it's long ago yeah, now since yeah. I've seen it. But no, that was just spur of the moment. I'm, I didn't even realize. I, I think I was just saying the lyrics accidentally, so I went with it. Uh, the best sports jersey ever. It doesn't have to be hockey. Best sports jersey ever. Um, oh, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I love the Tigers. Tigers jersey. Classic. Detroit Tigers. Um, classic. Obviously, love the Red Wings jersey. I love the Suns jersey. That's an all-time classic. I know. It is pretty um, good. So you're gonna... so you're, you're, and you, when you pick the Tigers there, so you're a Detroit sports fan. Being, and that came from... Everything but the Lions. Yeah, because never... the Lions have sucked for so long. <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't hard. You growing up loving the wings. I mean, what a wheelhouse for the wings that was. Um, mm-hmm. And even, yeah, the Tigers are more successful than the Lions. Although I say that tongue in cheek because I think the Lions, I like where they're going now. Yeah. I, yeah, and, and I'm kind of excited for a fan base to have something to cheer for that have been so loyal. Um, yep. Okay. Oh, your hero growing up. It doesn't have to be hockey, but it can be. I'm getting divided. Uh, well, my, you know, like like a lot of us, my dad, and then also, uh, but for hockey, it was Iserman. Um, I was a, you know, I was a, I was a nerd growing up. I was like a science nerd. Um, so I also had some of my heroes were some of the science guys that grew up around us. We had uh, Sir Frederick. Oh yeah, Banting one of the greatest Canadians ever. Um, I, I think even in the, remember they had that show. Yeah. I think he was like up towards number one. Yeah, I mean, poor yeah. Figure. Um, so there, there, were, there were guys like that, guys and gals. Um, my mom's a nurse. Um, I read uh, Florence Nightingale's journals, like the, the journals right. she published. She was a, 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 um, a big influence on me as well. But when I was a kid, it was, it was Steve Eiserman. Anything Steve Eiserman did, I, I wanted to figure that out. And, you know, Gretzky was a close second, when you, obviously. Um, say, you know, a lot of your heroes and a lot of your interests when you were a kid at least went this, in the scientific route. Um, did you ever watch like a space? Like I remember seeing a show when I, I'm older than you, obviously, uh, but there was a show on in the 80s called Cosmos. Carl Sagan, I think was his name. And now now Neil deGrasse Tyson just took it over a few years ago. I think it's on Netflix again. Yeah. Um, when you said, because science can go in any real direction you want it to, but was it, were you into that or was most of it uh, medical? 
It was mostly wow. medical. It was you were funny. a medical like, science um, fan as a kid. I've never heard that before. I was, I just was such a goof, you know, I was thinking back and it sounds like such a nerdy thing to say, but it was true. I was, you know, I played with a kid whose dad was a surgeon. I wanted to go and like hang out with this guy and see him do his work and, you know, do all Wow. That is um, interesting. I spent a lot of my time doing that stuff. You know, I wasn't, I'm looking over here. I got all my books up here from when I was from over the years. You'll get to pick a couple nice. off the shelf, I'm sure. But um, I just grew up that way. I always wanted to go into healthcare. Um, but you know, your kid, it's still your sports figures and your musicians. Yeah, true. And but your, most kids you know, don't have the the science, and more specifically, medical science. Uh, I mean, astronomy for me because I like Star Trek and stuff, right? So it just went there. I'm like, oh, this is possible. Yeah. Which, yeah. which, not that anybody asked here, but now looking back, I love about Star Trek that at least Gene Roddenberry is it. At, at least a lot of it was written about real science. I mean, obviously, I don't know Ewoks and not Ewoks, but you know, they're, they're, that's all that. Right? But but it's still it's, within that world. It's like what they're saying is it's possible for other things to be out there, and you know, warp speed is a thing, and then you know. The, the solar yeah. solar system isn't as big as the galaxy, which isn't as big as the universe. And that was all explained in Star Trek through the plot points. And then when you saw Carl Sagan and now Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about it, I could connect those dots. But I never thought I want to go out and do a brain operation because I saw ER, right? It's And, and even that would have been a little bit older. Yeah. Um, just interesting. Yeah. I'm um, okay. Yeah. Well, hey, it was it was easy to always have a laugh in the locker room. Those guys would have a great, even in college, <clears throat> going to games. The bus, you know, bus go pick everybody. Everybody's like an American studies major, yeah, or yeah. you know, something where you don't even know. I don't. I to this day, I don't even know what that is. <clears throat> They'd have to pick me up in a bus at the lab because I'd be still at the lab having to finish my stuff. So I I took a lot of heat over the years for it, did. but. Uh, Okay, if you're, you're you're right here in this world, you can't be a chiropractor anymore. You lost your license um, because you were drinking on the job. So you've been given a second chance, but you've been given a second chance as a DJ. You got to pick one of these names, though. Oaktown O'Grady, Funky G, Rink Pop. Remember those little things, Ring Pop? This is just Rink Pop. Or MC Puke, P E W K E. Oaktown O'Grady, Funky Ooh. G, Rink Pop, or MC Puke? Well, Oaktown O'Grady has and a nice San Francisco. ring to it. But, M, but, but MC Puke, it feels like you're, you're, you are going to throw the party of the century if you're, if you're bold, bold enough to say, look, yeah. this is what's going to happen. So I'm going, okay, that's it. You've said, say no that. more. You're, you, you would be MC puke as far as I'm concerned from here on in. Um, okay, you're going to New Zealand. You got a nice little sailboat. Um, the weather's going to be nice, nothing to worry about, but it's going to be a long trip. So you got to pick two of these celebrities to take the trip with you. Okay, it's a room for three and supplies on the boat. It's going to take you a few months to go and come back. Robert Downey Jr., Jr., Lizzo, Snoop Dogg, and Branius Maraca. Do you know who Branius Maraca is? The oldest living person on earth. She's a, she's 117 years old, and she lives what? in California. Yeah. Get out. She'll be 118 right. in a month. Those are my four. Those those are easy. That's Lizzo. She's from she's Detroit. From Detroit. She's I didn't realize that. Yep, yeah. and... Uh, and Branius. What you, stories? Come on. You imagine she's that. like a, she's like well oh into her life when the Titanic, not well in, but old enough to form memories yeah. when the Titanic went down. Yeah. Still bopping around, right? Probably got a yeah. TikTok account. Probably likes to uh, <laughs> have a good cup of Java in the mornings down at the corner. Um, what's the perfect record? How do you come up I, with these questions? What, what are am you I doing? doing? You... I, I often yeah. at nighttime. Yeah. With these particular ones at nighttime, to be quite honest with you, I have like one or two puffs of weed. I smoke weed a lot, but never like a full joint. That'd get me too. I, I don't go around like whacked out of my mind or anything. 
I just like to, like, if I need <laughs> to think, it goes the other way as it does for people. As yeah. you might tell, I've never been diagnosed with ADHD or something, but, but I think maybe, and, and nor do I care because I just start writing or I harness the energy in some positive way. But there's a lot of it, and I often need to be settled down just, just to get my thoughts in order. And when I smoke weed, not only do the thoughts get in order, but they just start expanding my mind to... Just, just to all corners, and I might be like watching some YouTube or something. They, yeah, they, they don't really come from anywhere, um, other than the depths of my brain, and it's usually some personal experience. And as far as the age, I just, I think someone that old that have some unbelievable stories to tell that we couldn't even comprehend. You know, that was like well, be I don't think women could vote in in when she was born. I think that happened in the twenties. You think about that's you know 1900 early 1900s probably went from like horse and buggy to car yeah. to someone lands on the moon to the internet yeah. to you know she was TikTok. closer yeah yeah um, exactly which, she was closer to the civil war than now right when yeah, she was right. born yeah. her lifespan brought her closer at the edges of that than this that's how old brandius maracas is uh what celebrity's nose would you like to ah, punch and her. break? Punch and break? Like when I hear um, or see Simon Cowell, not that he's even in the news much anymore, but and it, maybe he's a decent fella because you got to put on a show for TV, but it seems to me that he's authentically a prick, and I'd like to just bust his nose one day. Is there anybody that... that well, have, have you seen well, me you have punch? To, in this, in this world, world, you, you have to pick punch, somebody you know? to break their nose, and it's got to be a celebrity... <laughs> All right. Um, let me think. We can come back um, to it if you want. Every every once in a while, this is going to sound funny. Um, every so I listen yeah, to Smartless a lot. Almost I'm every episode, yeah, if I can. Every once in a while, I want to punch Bateman. Oh, really? Because um, yeah, do you, do you only, find him pretentious? You know, the other two guys. Oh well, I find that he he's a little. He's he's a little too put together. The other guys are letting it rip, and he's got his thing kind of put together. And every once in a while, he annoys the crap out of me. And my wife loves the guy. Too, I see so where you're coming from. Piece, I find I him think, really fun. You know well, one of my favorite TV shows ever is Arrested Development. It, it's all subjective, but it, it's so oh, it's up so near the top to that it's hard for me not to not to hear that. I like I love it so much. And people say, well, he's just being himself. I'm like, yeah, but he's been like Teen Wolf. And, you know, there's all kinds of roles. You know what I mean? Like, he's this guy had a lot of work. I mean, the guy's on, incredible. On, on, Don't give me what's wrong. that? Uh, yeah. Ozark, right? But to me, yeah. he's just going to always be Michael Bluth. And I find him funny. But I do, I do understand <laughs> where you're going with that. I listen, and he's definitely more, <laughs> he's less likely to go outside the edges than the other two. Right, yeah. You just want to shake him out yeah. of it every once in a while, and you like. But I mean, I love it. He does a lot of great stuff. It's just that yeah. Was the first guy I mean, that you, came to mind. If you had to give the true answer, you'd probably be here for two hours thinking about it. How many times have you eaten escargot? <laughs> oh, well, probably more. I mean, San Francisco, right? You get tons. Yeah, of I stuff mean, out I, there. No, I, I'd, but, I'd say uh, it wouldn't be the first. Six. Wouldn't be the for me. I know, I'm like half a dozen. It wouldn't be the first thing yeah, I order, that's for sure. Being a, How about you? Yeah, I've eaten. I, I, I wouldn't know. It's been years, but I, I would guess six to, to, to 12. I think it would fall in there. It used to be, I think, an appetizer at the keg when I ate there a lot. Like back like back when I was playing pro hockey, you know, or, or maybe it was Outback Steakhouse. Maybe that was it. I, I, miss, I miss the yeah, keg. Yeah, I know. I took my daughter there the other day for her birthday. She loved it. Um, in Newfoundland, a lot of those chains don't last, as you know, because people want to support local. But the keg is one great exception. Uh, it's down. It's it's improved. Yeah. It's just down right right on the water there, but next to George Street. Um, celebrity crush in high school or elementary school, whatever. Uh, high school, elementary school, celebrity crush, probably. Um, oh. Um, you you probably remember this. Do you remember uh, that show where the daughter? Yeah. This is like the eighties. 
the daughter's talking to her dad who lives in space. And she's, I think uh, she's got this like little orb in her room and the thing opens up. She's talking to her dad all the time in her bedroom. I feel like it was maybe like oh. um, Nicole Eggert or something that like is. that. Yeah. And that would have been someone oh, man. Oh, awfully she, sexy during that time. She was a babe. For she me, I, babe. I think it might've been Elizabeth Hurley, but I, I don't know if that's just because of when she was in Austin Powers, she was, phenomenal and, and like looking and had all those changes i remember being blown away by her look but uh, anyway that's all subjective good looking women are much a part of your life when you're a teenager aren't they uh they don't even know it uh other sports you played yeah they're, they're listening just, they're out there what other sports did you play growing up yeah uh i played everything um in fact i was listening um to your episode with Tessa uh, a while ago, who played at Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio Tessa's State with my sister. They're really interesting. Uh, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but y- y- you all had been talking about three hundred and sixty athletes, and and um, I thought, yep, that's right. So I grew up playing everything: uh, soccer, baseball, hockey, um, box cross. Uh, Just got into everything. Which you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got a I got a younger sister and then a younger brother as well. Uh, so all of us kind of played everything. My sister was was the best athlete. Um, I think my, actually my brother is probably the most athletic, but my sister um, was a great great hockey player. Um, she she was the captain at yeah. Ohio State um, when she was there. But we all played everything all the time. Bucket list place to visit. You haven't been yet. Uh, believe it or not, I have not yet gone to Mexico, so I really want to go to Mexico. Yeah, it's been a while since I've I've been there. Um, we used to go in Tri Cities. If you won an award, you got to go on a cruise. So, like seven or eight guys at the end get to go on a cruise, and uh, it was recommended to do the one out of Mexico, and I I loved it, even though it was a cruise. But I did go back a couple of times. The, the tourist stuff, Cabo, whatever. Um. But I just like the nice weather uh, more than anything, and um, it's really inexpensive. What's what's your spot? If I could go somewhere, um, I, I believe I'd like to get Australia or or somewhere like I'd like to see Hong Kong or or somewhere in the Asian world. Like I, I want to see. I, I know what it looks like, but I can't imagine just that it's a completely different culture. Not Australia. Now I'm talking. Um, probably let's let's say Hong Kong for lack of a better way to put it. Because it's big and, and I, 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 it, there's so much going on and there's a lot of it is a mystery. Like I know, like say, you know that they have a top 40, like we, I don't know about top 40, but they got music. Like we you keep, it's just completely cut off. Like you, you might hear stuff happen in Europe and that it makes its way over here um, or, or England. You know, I, I like British music a lot, especially when it comes to rock and roll or whatever, but there's just so much I don't under. All of my idea about the Asian world is based on stereotypes, and and, and I need I'd, I'd love to get there and see that. Now Australia, I just have a lot of listeners from there. I've always been intrigued, and I think there are a lot of similarities to to not only Canada but Newfoundland, <coughs> being that they're an island, a really big one. But you know, a little bit of isolation factor isn't the word, but <coughs> there's something to be an island, and you, you feel like part of something bigger like a unit you know like look at every city and or, or province every province in canada has a newfoundland bar people hang out with but it's not like i can go down the street to go to a saskatchewan bar right i'm not saying that they're not proud of where they're yeah. from but there's something about being from an island and i get that when i hear australians speak um okay you got to change your name you something happened when you were on death row it, it, it was like OJ, the glove didn't fit or whatever it was. And you get out at the last minute, you got a great lawyer, but now you lose your fucking mind again. You've kicked the shit out of somebody behind a saloon. You're upset. They're on that. You didn't mean to do it, but they hit their head on their curb. They're dead. You need to split town and you got to change your name. Your best buddy works for the FBI and he's going to get you a new identity, but you got to pick one of these names. Chaz Gibbons, Corky Leclerc, or Shooter McFarlane. 
Oh, Shooter McFarlane. Okay. All, all Sh- day. Shooter. Seven days a week. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say OG Simpson or something like that when you started out with the OJ. Yeah, that there, was, so. again, the, the question is your name change. What do you want to change your name to? But somehow, yeah. well, I just smoked half a joint before we started, so I'm still on that kick. Shooter McFarland. That's incredible. One of my best friends is a, is a McFarland, so he's going to. And Shooter's Eye, I like, like the name one. Shooter. It's, Shooter's good you name. know, I, I think it's more positive than it is negative. I've never heard anybody hate the name Shooter. Um, and, you know, it's better than just Terry or Sean or Dave, you know. Probably be a good name yeah. change for you. That would actually be a good one. Okay, last question. <laughs> no last question. Uh, you've got to pick your all-time team, okay? Three forwards, two defensemen, and a goalie. But it can't include Gretzky, Lemieux, Howe, Bobby Orr, or the, yeah, that, or, or any Canadians, Montreal Canadians. Well, I'd be easy. I wouldn't pick a wouldn't pick Montreal Canadians. Anyway. Well, fair enough. That takes Patrick Waugh. That takes uh, Rocket Richard, Jump right. Beliveau. They're all out of the question. They're You're that Canadian that hates the Leafs and the Habs. I don't hate the Habs. I I just know how much Manning loves them, and he's probably going to listen to this. And I just wanted to. <laughs> I want to grind his okay, gears fair, a little bit. Fair enough. Um, all right. So let's see. Okay. So so they're all out. Then I, I'm going to go. Um, well, on the left wing, I'm going to go with Bob nice. Probert. That's great, um, on the on the uh, on the right wing, I'm going to go with. Uh, if I go with Probert, I got to go with McCarty on the right wing. So. I'm going to start there. Starting center, with a muck line, I love it. Center. Well, I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of dangle up up the middle. I'm a London guy, and I got to stick with London other London guys. Um, I'm going to put maybe either Mike. I'm going to go with. I was going to say Mike Leg. I might go with Billy Armstrong. You remember Billy, Billy Armstrong? Armstrong? Vipers. Detroit yeah, Vipers, I Billy Armstrong. bought another Billy Armstrong. It's, we're not talking. Yeah, yeah, I do know who you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So he's my London pick, um, Willie. If you ever listen to this, sorry, pal. Um, okay. That's my forward line. Let's go on D. I'm going to go with. Uh, we need some size on D. I'm going to go with maybe the big man Hal Gill. On, on 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 lefty, you're not going to want. I'm to loving your picks. This. They're way outside the box. <laughs> there, you got to. Hey, on. I always hear the same. Not always. No, there's some people that have. This question I ask everybody as well, and uh, shouldn't say that, but I've never heard anybody bring up McCarty. A couple people, Probert, no Billy Armstrong, but I love that. So it's why we ask the question. This is the line. No one's. This is the five. No one's yeah. thinking about. Well, Hal right? is, so, is about six foot twelve. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm kidding. I kid, but he's, he's six he's foot eight, small. isn't he's he? Played. He's he, he's so big. Yeah. He played out here um, a few years ago. He's so big. He picked me up, going behind the net, and put me on the net. Massive guy. He literally just was like, "You're just gonna go over here, big big boy." Um, <clears throat> all right, what do I got? One left on 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 right D. Who's my right D? Al McKinnis. Wow. Al McKinnis. I love your picks. Al McKinnis, for those that don't know, his time, I guess, uh, is is starting to... A lot of those players that were just awesome, ever noticed, like, some guys had unreal stats like that, but they kind of get lost in time? Yeah. You, you know? like, yeah. and, and I get it that some players have more charisma, but it's just funny. We get to this point, and a lot of people don't... Re- like, when people... Say Eric Lindros wasn't that good. I'm like, well, I know you're looking at his stats with Toronto, like in the late when he came back in the 2000s. But like early on, like this guy was lights out. Guys like Al McInnes, um, some like like people still talk about Paul Coffey a lot, but like guys like Brian Leach, they don't. And he was like, I mean, yeah, I know he wasn't Coffey, but like real good. You know that goes on and on. It's funny what yeah. lasts through time, right? But it's it's probably just. You know, a combination of things, you know, if they're not in the media anymore. Paul Coffey still coaches. You don't really think about that. But 
but he's still on the scene kind of thing, you know? Uh, it's just, it's funny to me, the stuff that sticks with you too, <clears throat> you know, like just little things you see as a kid, maybe you get to go to a practice, yeah. maybe you get to yeah. go to an it's NHL game, you see, you see one or two things and it just kind of totally spins you. Um, and that stuff, that stuff kind of sticks with me. Uh, and obviously Al McKinnis being a Glace Bay, I think he's Glace Bay, right? I, Bay I know he's Nova Scotia. I don't know if it's Glace Bay, but uh, yeah, well, you gotta, he's gonna he would round out. Yeah, five. Round, no, but you, you get a round out um, six, my sure. friend. You got to pick a goalie. Oh, I got a goalie. Um, who's my goalie? Grant Fuhr. Yeah, there you go. There's another guy. See, he was Gretzky says he was the best goalie ever played with, and. Uh, a, a lot of people think it would have been easy to be a goalie for, for those Oilers teams, but I don't think it was easy because they gave up a lot on defense. Even though they were a great team, they always let up yeah. a lot of shots. That was their theory. We're gonna, and then it worked. They were going to beat you 8-5, to five, and they did it all the time, right? And he was fun to watch, too. He was, yeah. you know, he's the yeah. wrong way, you know. And Charismatic. He's he said, he's still place. got the goalie record for points kids. in a season, 14. Yeah, 14 points. All, uh, obviously all assists, but yeah, that's how good they were offensively. But I mean, well, when you got guys like Paul Coffey, right, that are incredible, but but yeah. it, it, he, again, it gives a little bit up defensively to be that good. He had 48 fucking goals. He nearly had 50 goals one year. But when, again, when you're doing that, you got to make some big saves. You got to have a goalie in there. You know, I'm not sure. Can you imagine seeing that this year? No, I can't. Right? Like those stats? Yeah. Um, it's, it, that was it was an incredible time. time, and this has been an incredible time. Do you have anything else to promote or plug before we go? I got nothing to plug. I'm excited to see you in 24 hours. To... Um, and Are you yeah, picking me up, been, you said? It's been a blast watching you. Deadly. Okay, we're going to have a nice little car ride. Maybe even uh, listen to some tunes like Ted Hitchcock and Pam. Uh, thanks for doing this today. I, I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. And long live Trinity Pub. Long live the Mannings. And hope to see you uh, this summer in Newfoundland. But we'll get to that this weekend, buddy. Thanks for doing this. And we'll catch you tomorrow. That'd be great. Okay, brothers. Good Thanks, to see you. Good to see you. Okay, that was Sean O'Grady. Dr. Sean O'Grady. If you're in Idaho or the surrounding area, the surrounding area of Idaho, it's a huge state. But if you are, if you're within driving distance and you want to have a good time, a lot of these things I go to on the weekends. Um, I've been very busy lately, as you know. I've been to uh, Banff and Brockville and Fort St. John and Brooks, Toronto. Now here we got this uh, just in the last couple months. Next week, Chicago. The week after that's Halifax and Binghamton. So I've been traveling a lot, and I don't say yes unless I'm intrigued by the event. So it's not always um, the, the, the most money or uh, the warmest climate or, or, or the best situation, like I said, financially or geographically or whatever. But what I try to do um, when I get offered these things is, is, is really pick some cities that I, I love to go to. Uh, I haven't been in a while. Brooks, Alberta was awesome. People go, Brooks? I'm like, yeah, it's small town Alberta, man. A lot of those people, there's a lot of Red Deer Rebels fans out there back in the day that I went to see. There, I can find, if I find an intriguing, and sometimes it is, if I got nothing to do and, and I haven't been to a place, sure, I'll, I'll take a chance. But for this particular weekend, like when, when Sean asked, I was so fucking pumped to go back to Idaho. I love that part of the earth. Um, like, Earth meaning, you know, if it's just a planet with no borders, I like, I, I, I would be intrigued by that area um, for many, many reasons. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, anyway, I'll get there. And I appreciate everybody following along. Um, I'm going to follow my Instagram if you're in there and you want to, or, or if you want to come to the game, you're listening to this now from Boise. Uh, and I know it's a bit of a, of a jaunt, but um, for those wondering i'm definitely going to stick around after i'm going to talk to as many locals as i can uh this isn't make the money go back to the hotel this is 
spend some time with the locals as, as much as I can. Dinner, drinks, stories. Um, you know, I'm going to be real social. I'm really looking forward to getting back there. So if you're on the fence about going to the game and, you know, you're worried about um, may, maybe the long drive with <coughs> with, with um, I guess, no payoff, whatever it would be, there's going to be, the game's going to be awesome and I'm going to stick around afterwards and I can't wait to uh, to have a chat about all things hockey, all things Idaho and uh, whatever you want to talk about. So that's where I'll be. They're bringing me in for a reason to be, to be social and to live and give some energy to the weekend. So again, if you're listening, I'd love you to show up. Uh, that's, that's what we're going for here. We're going to, Sell some tickets, raise some money. We're going to just have a good time and celebrate not only the game, but just Idaho and hockey and life in general. It's a great time to fucking be alive. And uh, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Thanks for listening. Uh, If you're downtown St. John's, why not check out the Bull and Barrel Trinity Pub, TJ's Pub. Rob Roy Confusion, Martini Bar, of course, Green Sleeves. If you're going to go for a bite to eat, check out Loose Tie, Merchant Tavern, Blue on Water, and of course, Wedgwood Cafe that also do catering. If you want to work out, go to Ryan Power, Power Conditioning, Strength and Balance for the Body and Mind on Rope Walk Lane. If you want to go to Mr. Lube, there's two locations in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. One's on Torbay Road, one's on Chem Mount Road. Live, laugh, loop! Pitbull Pain Relief, the pain sticks that just don't quit. True hockey, take what is fucking yours. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll be back in just a few days with more Tales with Tear. Catch you guys on the rebound.